buddy buddy my friends long time no see i know you guys have waited me for very such a long time i just had to come back had to come back since i got a lot of good reviews from you guys uh recently after i got a job i got really super busy but um as a developer you know i know that i should keep learning by myself and the best way of learning is to teaching one another so i just came back and actually my company encouraged me to go back to hacker rank practice some problems so that I can apply those um, good practical, you know, those program knowledges and skills into um, our company's futures and company's projects. So anyhow, long story short, we'll start uh, by using Python because that's uh, one of the most popular and hottest program language in current uh, computing industry. So today we'll just start off with a very easy um, project, um, but yeah. We'll just quick take, quick take, uh, take, let's take a, just really quick take a look and I'll just uh, walk you through one by one. Just leave me any comments. If you have any issues or any questions, I'll be happy to help you out because that's my job. All right, so let's take a look into this question. Given an array of integers, let's say one, one, da, 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 okay. What we need to do is find and print the maximum number of integers you can select from the array such that Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so it's a long story. So what it basically means is we got to somehow partition this array into either one or two or more, uh, actually more subarrays. But the criteria is the difference among the elements in this array should not be greater than one, meaning that it can be either one, one, two, two, or four, five. There, so at the first subarray, you cannot have three and for the second sub, we cannot have six or seven, okay? So we're expecting a lot of duplicates in array. And if you take a look at the input here, four, six, five, three, three, one. For me, the best way of understanding problem is to take a look at a lot of inputs and outputs. If you can't still get the hang of what's going on, then you have to read one by one. But since my major is computer science, I'll just try to crack it down by myself. All right, four, six, five, three, three, one. And sample output is three. Why is it? Because if you see this array, right, let's part partition and based on this example. One, is there any two? No, so one is out. What about the next value? Three, is there any four? Yes, it is. So three, three, four is over here, right? And the leftover is five and six. So you see the maximum number uh, of an array, a so subarray is three. That's why it's three. What about this one? One, two, two, three, one, two, right? Same thing, same thing. So it's one, one, two, two, one, two. Okay, so this is five. So let's think about this problem, how we approach this. First, my best way of doing it is first I write out all the test cases. I just copy and paste from here, right? All three different cases. and. I just visualize all those um, expected input and output. And in the meantime, I see the steps as you see here. One, one, two, 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 four, four, five, five, five. That's why the output is five. The maximum number of subarrays, the length of subarrays is five. So this is for second and third and fourth. So uh, before we jump into the problems, there are a lot of data structures in Python. For example, there are array, there is like list, there is a set, there is a dictionary, there is a, what else do you have? Like string man manipulations and so on. In Java and R programming, you also have all many, many different data structures, right? So in this case, since there are a lot of duplicates, for me, these two are top candidates to use, either set or dictionary, okay? I think it's gonna be a good approach to use start with a set because dictionary, we use dictionary when we need a key and value pairs. In this case, yes, we can use dictionary, but I don't see any um, disparative or very obvious pair of key and value pairs. So I'll probably start with set since all we need to do figure out is, okay, how many keys or how many, like literally what are the primary elements of these one list and how many of them occur in previous test cases. What I mean by that is, okay, I'll just show you what I mean by that is, okay? So let's first define a set, uh, like a temp set, temporary set. And the way you convert the set, uh, I mean the list from set in Python is just use a set notation like this, set parenthesis A. A, I'd say is an array, or you can change any parameters that you want. Array in R A R as an array. And next, what I want to do is, before I write all the code here, I'll just write a pseudocode and think about it, okay? 
So let's imagine that we convert this into set. In the meantime, I'll write it down as a temp. I'm just thinking test case one. So you know, set does not have duplicates, and in Python, it automatically, it automatically um, sort of controls the order of these elements. So it's gonna be as a one, two, three, four, five, one, two, four, five. Right now, what I want to do is I'll probably definitely loop through each element in a set. That's what I want to do, right? And I want to check how many of these elements occur in this previous one. That's what I want to do, okay? So, while I loop through each set, okay, what I want to do is I want to check if the that exists. But after we check it, right, what we want to do, we want to check if the adjacent, the adjacent elements of the set we want their difference to be one, right? Because it's, if it becomes two, then that's out of the tape, that's out of our discussion. Because we only want, based on the nature of this problem, we want the chosen integers, any two of chosen integers, okay, in this greater, or less than or equal to one. So check if the difference, okay, check if the difference of adjacent elements in a set, okay, is less than or equal to one, okay? This is the precondition. Before we jump into the anything, before we check the frequencies of each element in this previous array, we want to check, hey, is the difference between each adjacent sets, is it like equal to one? If it's greater than one, we don't want that. How we, so should we write an else statement? Probably not, because in Python, under one if statement, if you write one if statement under one for loop, if it doesn't satisfy the condition, it will just keep going like a continue. So we don't need it by default. We don't, we don't need that. Okay. Um, if then what we want to do, okay, let's assume that we found adjacent elements, their differences less than or equal to one, actually equal to one in this case, right? If then what we want to do is we want to count the frequencies of each element and sum them up together, right? Because we want to count the frequency, how many ones are occurring here, how many twos are occurring here, okay? Like, and we want to sort of count, or we can make each sub race, but we don't make it because all the output matters is how, it's actually the number. So we can actually bar partition this array like this in this example, but we just want to check how many ones occur here, how many twos occur here, so that we can sum it up, so we can sort of make each one list, and then we want to count the length of the list, okay? Okay, after that, we sort of need a genetic variable. At the back of the coding, okay, you all the time have to think about the global and local variable. So in the back of your mind, we want to definitely declare one global variable that keeps track of the count of each frequencies of elements in a set belonging to each element, I mean belonging to each list. So over here, we want to basically update the current count value if the new summed up value is greater than the previous one, okay? So this is sort of my logic because computer science Computer science is not about just crunching the code. It's about your thought process. It's about your like very sequential step-by-step -step thinking process, okay? So let's write a code right now. So let's loop through each element in a set for i and range length of temp the set, okay? We want to check if the adjacent elements in a set is less than or greater than one. But the way we do is if the temp of i plus one Minus, that's the difference, right? So, minus temp current i, if that's less than or equal to 1, okay? This is sort of the way I check it, right? Then, we want to count the frequencies of each element and sum them together, okay? So, we want to, uh, first, the way you count an element in an array in Python is dot count notation that counts method. So we, you will want to count the number of i plus one elements in temp, and then you want to sum it up in a array dot count of temp of ith elements. In this case, in this example, it's going to be the number of ones and number of twos in this array. That's what it's going. And I would just want to 
temporarily, you know, I don't need to, but I just want to temporarily save this variable into a cur. I just assign this, and I want to compare, actually, here, at the very top, at, outside of this for loop, we just want to declare account equal one as global variable. We just want to keep track of the count, because if we found an element that is greater than the previous count, we want to update that, right? So, over here, you just want to say count, oh, you just want to check, right? If First, you need, hey, is cur, this cur, the value, is it greater than count? Then we want to substitute, update the count, because that's what we want to return in future at the, at the end, right? And then finally, you want to return count. But when you run this code, you got a little error that says set object does not support indexing in Python. So you actually need to convert this set into a list, okay? And one, one another thing is once you compare every time, okay, whether it be using Python or other Java, if you're using I plus one as a JSON sort of indexing or that kind of structure, you want a minus one here when you uh, declare sort of the range or scope of this looping because that's how you exactly locate and uh, compare the JSON elements in an array or data structure. And when I print it out, it prints five, is it right? Yeah, five. And uh, because this function's scope only existed here and in a global kind of variables or the area, I declare test case one and test case two. Let's test case one. Oh, actually that was test case three, which is five. That's also correct, but let's retest it. Test case one, that's a five. How about test case two, four, six, six, one. Test case two, I want to print out the results. Checking it. Three, perfect. How about test case three? Let's check it out. I'm expecting what? Five, right? Five. All right. Yo, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed my video and I hope you have a great day. I'll keep uploading. I can't promise as often as I, how often I'll upload, but uh, peace and I wish you the best luck. Kudos to ev everyone who wants to improve your coding and logic and that's how you change the world. Thank you.